In a kingdom not too far away, a woman asks to see the king. The guard tells her to leave and that the king would never see a witch like her. She turns around as if to leave. Then she spins around and blows dust in the guard's face. The guard collapses, falling asleep. The woman hobbles directly to the throne room. The king was angry that someone entered his room without permission, and even angrier that he didn't even know this person. The king looks behind the witch and sees his guard sleeping on the ground. The king moves himself in front of his daughter to protect her from the witch. The king exclaims, How dare you? You cannot come in here. Now be gone, beggar. The witch simply asks, King Yurikdor, I come with all respect to you and your kingdom, but I ask that your kingdom also respect the Black Forest. Your men are cutting down too many of the ancient oaks. We need them. Otherwise, it will lead to the cause. Those trees provide light to fight the cause. The cause can destroy everything, and the trees keep it in balance. The king says, I am the king. It is my decision on what stays and what goes. Now it is time for you to go. The king pulls a hidden dagger from under his sleeve, showing it to the witch. The witch pleads again. The black forest isn't even part of your kingdom. You don't own them, and the forest belongs to everyone. They protect all of us against the cause. Please. There are many smaller trees within your kingdom that you can use for wood. The king says he decides the fate of the entire land. And when the witch begs again, the king simply waves his dagger. The witch turns to leave and says, Your actions will lead to a cursed kingdom. The king thought nothing of the beggar and dismisses her as crazy. He continued to cut down the trees of the Black Forest because he is the king. Those trees are so big, he thought, and without any effort, we can collect a lot more wood in a shorter time. Three years later, the curse came true. It was a dark winter day. The princess said to her father, This winter is never ending. Father, do you think it has to do with that witch's curse? Do you think she cursed us when we continued to cut down the ancient oaks? The king replied, She wasn't important, and they aren't her trees. This is just a longer winter, and you have nothing to worry about. The princess sits in her room looking outside at the cold snow. She knew that the winter was lasting too long. She knew that the days were too dark. One night, the princess snuck out of the castle and went to the Black Forest. She knew this winter wasn't right, and she knew the witch had something to do with it. When the princess came to the edge of the Black Forest, she was aghast. She had played near the forest a lot as a child, and it was simply gone. Stumps, as far as she could see, remained where there should have been the enchanted forest. The princess started walking through the massive tree stumps, and no trees should mean no shadows. But with every step she walked forward, it got darker and darker. Hello, said an echoed voice. The princess had no idea who just said that and was quickly looking all around. She couldn't see anything in the dark and was now very scared. You don't look very big, the echoed voice said. The princess was terrified and didn't know what to do. Who are you? Where are you? I want to go home, the princess cried. Then go. For those who listen, we can talk, the ancient oak said. I didn't know trees could talk, a shocked princess replied. We do more than talk. We give you fire. We give you homes. We keep the land in balance. 
The princess thinks and says, The cause. You protect us against the cause, right? To which the tree replies, The ancients pronounce it, C.O.'s, little one. But yes, we used to balance and protect the land, but now there are not enough of us. The princess thinks back to the witch and now starts to understand what she was saying. The princess looks to the massive oak tree. Is there anything I can do to end the winter? The ancient oak tree says, It is possible to stop the advancing darkness if she can convince her father, the king, to stop cutting down the rest of the ancients. But if she wants to see the light of day again, she will need to replace all of the ancient oaks that her kingdom destroyed. The princess begins to walk away from the darkness towards her kingdom, yelling, I'll be back shortly. The next day, the princess returned to the ancient oak and tells him that her father doesn't understand and doesn't believe that removing trees would lead to the darkness. Her father also said that he loves his daughter very much. And out of love for her, he has agreed to stop cutting down trees from the black forest. The princess sits down on a stump and begins to cry. The tree asks, What is wrong? Your father has agreed to what you asked. The ancients are safe. And the princess replies, I walked into the black forest again today, and I saw how many ancients were gone. There were so many stumps, I couldn't even count them all. There's too many, and we'll never see the light again. It's impossible, and I don't know how to start. We'll start with a single tree, the witch says from behind the princess. We will start with a single tree, and it will take time. But with each step, we will be closer. The witch has a sapling in hand and walks toward the princess. The witch looks stern at the princess and puts the sapling into the princess's hands. The princess slowly bends down and digs a small hole to put the baby tree. The witch and the princess pat the soil down and stand up after planting the first tree. There's so many. One little tree won't matter, the princess sobs. It matters to that one. Once planted in the enchanted forest, the baby tree giggles. Without word, the princess wipes the tears from her cheek and realizes the difference they can make one step at a time. The moral is, no matter how small, steps in the right direction make a difference.